Should we allow the massive destruction and killing of species that will inevitably take place? was Wednesday night and that water is flowing. When I was here on Thursday, that footprint, this far footprint, there was no water in it. So the water's flowing down and coming up. This water's coming from underground, not above. We only got a quarter inch of rain. There's a good three inches in the deeper parts. This is proof positive, guys. There's fresh water galore underneath our feet. So LA Audubon, our chapter is extremely focused on education, which is why I'm here, and the conservation and restoration. And I love the little round balls that they dig out. Their little excavators. And then the pickleweed. So this is a great spot to take the students to get that connectivity. All the plantings that you see in front of the visitor center at the top of the hill, was restoration work done under the leadership of Margot Griswold, who's the president of our board. Myona Creek, and remember from Sentinella down, it's all muddy bottom. Then as the water moves in, you have this. 
types of berms and how they are constructed. And here you can see, at least on the outside, the rock wall. Um, at Bayona, there are different ideas floating as to what would be within the berm, but likely some sort of structural elements. As you can see, these types of levees are quite massive, and the amount of habitat that it will displace is, is, is large. Um, it will not allow for habitat to be on it because the levees need to be in, maintained for their integrity, which animal control uh, has to be on alert, if you will, for inspections to make sure that you don't have any rodents burrowing into these areas that may then cause a breach that would then grow through time and hence why you have all the grasses so that they can be inspected regularly and you also don't have any tree roots that may also breach the integrity. So when you're talking about introducing new levees all around Biona, you're talking about introducing something that will destroy habitat uh, from a standpoint of even having it be land available as habitat. It won't be. Tribal leader John Tommy Rosas is about to establish for you that Biona is historically a seasonal, predominantly freshwater wetland. Hi, this is John Tommy Rosas. 1923 and actually before, about 1906 to 1909 and then 1920, they had various lawsuits and cases, so this got mis realigned and different things happened, but at, on this USGS map, what's important is the federal government determined that the channel should run and stop here and this is their mark there for fresh water that comes down is let let go into the fresh water wetlands that was already existing it does, did not go through uh, like it does now into the marina see now it goes and then the high and low tides come up it that before see the difference right here right at area a Right here, you can see that creek line. And so the original Bayona Creek was here, and then they channeled it, but they still dumped the fresh water here. They did not mix it or inundate this with more salt water like they want to do in alternative one, two, and three. This is about fresh water. This is all fresh water. And then you can also see the salt water little channels that were here for the estuary. So really the estuary, which is a salt and fresh water mix, is in this area, way down here. That's pretty much how they drew it. Right? They only they only had the salt pan here and maybe here. So this shows that it was existing and that the Army Corps and their graphic that the and their map and that their design and everything to dump the water right here was for fresh water. So that's why in my graphic, I'm saying 1923 USGS shows freshwater wetlands, estuary, and freshwater source, sorry, misspelled it, from Bayona Creek. This is still a, really actually a creek, even though it was channeling. It did not go to the ocean like I explained. Here's area A. So they want to rip all this out and, and then have that be salt water intruded and it was never like that. And what's important about this video and what I'm explaining is that it shows that this was fresh water before, but it was made purposely fresh water restored again by the fresh water restoration of the channel. So they can't say that they're restoring anything. If they're going to restore it, it should be to this alignment and this source of water which we can get from Playa Vista's uh, fresh water right here. In the EIS, we have to go for the fresh water alternative. The Army Corps made this determination, so they can't get permits to tear the four, in the 408 scheme they made with the county and the 404 with the uh, Fish and Wildlife and the BWER here that, to change it into salt water. It's just fraud. 
this green area is all going to be in salt water because we know the tides go up to 10 feet on that um, it's quite a bit of material six to nine um, million cubic yards of material this is fresh water in here and it's going to this fresh water area the wetlands this is all fresh water here Sydney Alec Creek's right here water went this way it went this way you know it, it mingled and created that's that's the estuary mingled there but but this area a part you know it it's it's fresh water this whole area is it had to be predominantly fresh water i'm going to show you what was not shown by uh the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Commission, uh, Bay Foundation, the Coastal Conservancy, they didn't, they used the the T-sheets for their agenda, but they didn't show what I'm going to show you. This is the original, you can see the wetlands is here, the marina. So anyway, this is the map T-143-2B, the graphics that, the, that they did originally, but also the um, the ones that were added uh, by a research team that made it more accurate, but they, those were not used if it didn't help the the conservancy and the bulldozing saltwater inundation agenda. A lot of the Enviro groups have weighed in for it. Most of them got money. This shows the, the original map. So you can see where the wetlands is now. It's right here. Went into here, but they butchered it with Playa Vista. This is the Bayona Creek. This is the Sentinella Creek. Of course, it didn't end there, but it was part of the wetland. And it didn't just start there. It went way back into here. So some of the additional features they put in weren't, weren't accurate. I also don't think this is totally accurate that it went here and went over. And you'll see on the, on what I'm going to show you why I feel that way. So I'm going to add the colors in of the estuary and habitats and the tea shoot. Okay, so when you look at this, here is the Biona Creek and another stream. To give you some bearing and it shows this open water section and the green is vegetated wetland so I'm, these are graphics that that were on the original um, drawings uh, they were they were outlined but they weren't so you can see it in here they weren't colored so this is the color version which is easier to understand and including the labels so I'm leaving those up but it shows that this was all vegetated and and the red is basically the, the salt water portions of it that you can see here what I'm doing is showing how the information wasn't used properly or accurately and it was only used by the the you know Coast Conservancy and them and Bay Foundation to uh, shore up their agenda. When you look at this, I'm trying to show you the difference of the where the salt is. They're claiming it was up in here, which I don't believe, but it could have been. It does show how much green vegetated wetlands there was, which is all this which was quite a bit and so even if this was accurate we know this is pretty accurate even if this was accurate it doesn't justify you know tearing all this open with a bulldozer to inundate the rest of the wetlands with salt water when it never had that the grade and the the different labeling doesn't back up what they had because when you look at this they had this section here 
This is the water, it's fresh water. The, the fresh water sources were there, it just conflicts with what's, what's known. I think this was a, a possible um, area that wasn't salt. It was like this one, which is an intertidal flat. And um, I think this one was too, but I don't think it was intertidal like they, they're talking about it with the ocean. I think it was um, a flat with just fresh water that would hold like a pond. You see where this is fresh water. It doesn't add up that this would be tidal. Nor does this because here's the fresh water from the creek. I think the fresh water was actually coming down that way. It was intertidal, but it wasn't tidally influenced. So I think they've got it labeled wrong. But um, when you look at it that way, it does, it still doesn't justify what they're saying with this being uh, open water and here you know, having the rest of it be vegetated wetland. And it's not supported by the conclusions of salt water or salt pan. It wasn't like that. So this helps explain that in the agenda and what they didn't show. I'm hoping that um, when you folks look at this, you'll see what, what we're looking at and the reasons why it should be left as a um, freshwater alternative, not bulldozed, not saltwater inundated, and have this be a feature of um, restoration like I put in my video. Like I said, some of this could be uh, freshwater wetlands as well as over here. And this, this part of B could be restored. It's a collection area, so I think we can have a pump station here where this jumps into the Bionic Creek channel and then have it, the water cleaned up so it's, it's usable and more natural and then redistribute it appropriately in these areas. It was a Southern California Coastal Water Research Project and they developed those maps. A lot of it, a lot of the reports that were done for the Bina Wetlands Ecological Reserve EIS and EIR didn't have these details and they didn't use the coloring. So that's why I thought it was important to do this. It's John Tommy Rose from Tatton. Video on the freshwater alternative that I came up with. The freshwater, which is the blue, and the green, which is the the plant. The darker green, like this, is uh, trees. Arrangement that would work there with one pipeline. And it shows up. This is the pipeline. We would have a pump station running through a Driscoll line probably about a four four inch diameter line and it would run all the way through and have sprinklers and a rainbird larger sprinklers so it pretty much cover all the area you know small wetland freshwater plants larger ones medium size and then willow trees and whatever else coastal oak this graphic is the trees on area a and i made a google earth uh, video that area A as it is now and then here is that overlay and you can see it slowly increasing in the blue and green go down and make it more uh, visible so I'm, I'm guessing this would be like in the first year in a couple of years more it would be you know thicker it would would settle in and start pooling this would be when it would be completely Finish. You can see the water coming from the fresh water the pipeline would go through there and then feed all this, like I explained. And all these palms and, that, and all the cleanup from SoCal gas would have to happen to get their uh, incinerator to get their oil infrastructure out and cleaned up. I'm just kind of flying around and showing you the kind of how it would look in different places. We kind of looked before and, and what it looks like, what it looked like after we got the fresh water in there. Huge difference. And there'd be trees. You can't, 
really see how the tree heights would be. This is just kind of the footprint of it. But it would be a big increase in habitat and then of course the animals and all that. And uh, that would be the best way to restore the area A. And it, it also can include parts of B because the saltwater part ends here. Hi, this is John Tommy Wilson from Patton Congregation about the final wetlands ecological reserve path EIS EIR. And I want to talk about the, the levees and how they're going to block the, the view, which is a violation of the coastal act. So this is this artist rendering is way off. But they're projecting this false information is what I'm trying to explain. Uh, there's only salt water. And this is the step because, it, like I said before in the other video, this will never happen. This whole area will be full of salt water. This is not accurate. But for them to use this and have the artists draw this in a deceptive manner, show their pattern and behavior, uh, I'm just expressing my opinion. Uh, you folks can look at the information and decide for yourself. This is on the, the view blockage of the levee that they don't have any graphics on, so I've, I've made these. And I've put these um, polygons in to show the basic height. Uh, right where these light poles are, that's about 25, 20 feet. And the levees will be that high or more, as I put here. And that applies to all of it that I'm showing you. But this is just to give you an idea of that, that um, normally you would be able to see from the road this is Jefferson, and this is PCH Lincoln. So that's an issue. Uh, and that includes pedestrian bikes and cars, the visual blocking of the of the levees and the height. They're not gonna be right on the this close, they're gonna be in a little bit. So that's what that's what you will not see and that's what will occur in the little levee, uh, alt one levees and, and they're blocking. And that's forever. I mean that's not gonna have change. This way is the uh, Fiji Way, so the open space will be locked. This is on uh, Fiji Way, right near the end, 20 feet right here. So you will not see from Fiji Way the wetlands anymore either. And that's one of the nicer views. Jefferson and where it gets colder, that view will be gone forever. It's just, you know, huge and it's for tsunami. It's for tsunami protection for flight. This feel like this is a violation of the coastal act. They can't obstruct uh, views in the coastal zone. So you will not see the wetlands anymore, but it's, a, it's about three miles to pick up the wetlands and the last bit of nature on this side of town that we should have a freshwater alternative, which we're working on here. John Tommy Rosas for Tatton Media Productions, Bionna Wetlands. Ecological Reserve, D-E-I-S, T-E-E-I-R, uh, graphics and um, the defects in them. I'm going to start with the grading plan. So these lines right here are the levees. These are main levees that go against um, basically Fiji Way all the way to Lincoln. Here's Lincoln right here, PCH. And then that levee will continue from Culver um, against where the channel is now, basically where the bridge starts. It's going to wrap around and go this way. But they're going to stockpile material here. And they're cutting out the existing channel from here all the way to here. But you will not see the wetlands anymore. These, these levees are 25 to 30 feet above the road. This is a grading plan for alternative one. The, the main grading is going to be in area A which is across here. That's where the channel would be now and then all that material from Lincoln to Fiji Way all the way around uh, basically around the south end of the marina and then um, they're going to carve out and excavate and apparently re remount it. They're going to leave SoCal gases thing here for some reason and or no salt water intrusion in this area and that's what they'll do when they when they perform this if, if we let them have that uh, agenda and that 
uh, alternative. For me personally, that uh, that was Mary Small and uh, some other people at a meeting about almost uh, nine years ago that they were planning on um, uh, selling the dirt to the poor um, so the poor could build larger sipperts in the San Pedro Bay. Uh, they used steel, uh, Chugman steel, corrugated, and then they pump out the water and they fill it with dirt and they create a, a big shipper. They've done those before. They're basically uh, artificial islands. But um, I have plans that show their uh, haul routes and how they're going to barge it down the, the channel and then tugboat it to San Pedro and, and the port of LA. But because um, that's the only way they would get that much dirt. Um, their calc the, the, the report's calculations are just under 3 million cubic yards. So a cubic yard is a yard cubed. If you picture that much material, um, they're talking about 3 million of those. And basically, that's a square mile, 10 feet tall of dirt. Uh, if you want to do your own math, but it's just to give you an uh, amount of material.